My name is Tana Ambrose, and I know most of you. But I work at Lincoln Trail College as the Director of College Access, and I also teach our Pathways to Success courses in Leadership Development. So if you are coming to the Lincoln Trail this fall, yeah, you could possibly have me as a teacher for Pathways to Success. And if I haven't met you yet, I hope to meet you soon. Um, welcome, Max. I see you just joined us. And hey, how are you? I, uh, together with Chris Ford, and I'm going to let him introduce himself in a second, as well as our other panelists, uh, just got together and we were just coming up with ways to stay engaged with our students. And we were looking for topics that we could talk about and really wanting to make the most of this time that we all have because of COVID. And so uh, the very first topic that came up, and that was um, Mrs. Boyce's idea was 10 things that I wish I'd known before I started college. And since some of you on the call have already been through college, we thought it'd be fantastic if you could share with the brand new students those tips or those insights that you have that might make the transition a little bit easier for the incoming students. And like Chris mentioned, we are recording this because we want to be able to share with other students later who aren't able to join us tonight. And even though the title is 10 Things I Wish I'd Known, hopefully we'll have more than that. But uh, we're, we're going to let everyone have a chance to speak and to share those things that come to mind. Whether we get to 10 or whether we have 15, I don't really know. It's not a scripted list. It's really just more an organic conversation that we want to have with everyone on the line. So Chris and Mr. Thorson and Connor and Winter and Cindy, would you go ahead and just introduce yourself so that everyone on the call knows who's who's from Lincoln Trail and who's putting this call together tonight? I'll, I'll go ahead and start, Tana. Uh, my name is Chris Ford, and I am the coordinator of marketing and public information at Lincoln Trail College. Uh, for those of you that don't know me yet, you're going to see me walking around a lot with cameras and taking pictures and videos of you guys. All the athletes uh, know me very well uh, for doing that and uh, really looking forward to uh, meeting everybody new. Okay, thank you. Cindy, you want to go I'll go next then. <laughs> my, name is, um, my name is Cindy Boyce, and I teach um, history, political science, and philosophy courses at LTC. Madison, I had you already in class, so I'm glad to see that you're um, coming to LTC. And I'm also the Student Senate Advisor. Uh, Winter will introduce herself in a moment, but she is our uh, Student Senate President. Um, so um, hopefully she'll talk about getting involved. Um, um, on campus, and I think that's about it for now. We'll go on, Winter. You. Um, I'm Winter Harmson. I'm a sophomore this year at LTC. I'm the Student Center President, as Ms. Boyce said. I am the captain of the soccer team, and I am technically like a center. I am the manager of the uh, Student Athlete Study Center, which is a Um, I'm Connor York. I am a part-time instructor at Lincoln Trail. I teach English classes and I'm excited to get to know some of you a little better. This coming summer will be my second semester at Lincoln Trail. Yes. Okay, my name is Phil Thorsten. I teach psychology and sociology, so I usually see a lot of new students and I also help out with um, Student Senate. And then those of you students, thank you so much who joined us kind of last minute to be on the panel. Could you go ahead and just take a turn also and introduce yourself and let us know what you do at Lincoln Trail if you're a student athlete or maybe different things that you're involved in on campus. I am Max Davenport and I play baseball at Lincoln Trail. Um, yeah. I did not mean to cut you off, Mac, so please, please go ahead if you have something else to share with us. Oh, nope, we're good. Johnny and Johnny and Blake? Uh, I'm Johnny Maynard. I'm going to be a sophomore at Lincoln Trail. Uh, I play baseball and uh, majoring in sports management. Uh, I'm Blake Barrett. I'm a sophomore at Lincoln Trail. I also play baseball. Uh, 
Um, I also work at the Athlete the Center, and I also lifeguard. Awesome. At the college. Okay. And then let's see, Madison and Chelsea, and then we have one other student. Um, would you go ahead and just introduce yourself so we know kind of who we're talking with this evening? Hey, y'all. I'm Chelsea. Um, I'm actually an active duty Army recruiter. I'm originally from Olney, but I'm stationed in Memphis. And this will be my first foray into the medical field. I already have a master's degree, but I'm going into the medical system, and I was just trying to get some. Oh, teachers' names with faces. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining us, Chelsea. That's, a, that's cool. Um, I'm Madison, and um, <laughs> I just graduated from Oblong, but I'm just going to LCC to get my generals and get my associates, and then hopefully transfer to a university. Yay. Cool. <laughs> thanks, Madison. Do we have one more person on the call? I can't see the name of this. I can't see, but is there somebody else or is that just someone's phone that they're using for audio? I'm Macy. Um, I play volleyball at Lincoln Trail and I'll be a sophomore this year. I also work in the bookstore. Macy, I thought you were yeah, going to Yay, I'm so excited. I, I thought you told me you couldn't and I haven't had a chance no, to No, I made it. Yay, awesome. <laughs> I'm awesome. super excited. Thank you. And then Cameron, like you're welcome. Mind us too. Yay. Um, Cameron, let's see. Anybody else? Hi, Cameron. It's, it's not actually. <laughs> it's not actually Cameron. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. It's not actually Cameron. My daughter logged into my Zoom, so. <laughs> so I'm actually calling in on Austin Gale's behalf because he's at work tonight. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> and his mom. Well, welcome yeah. to the call. That's so fun. And welcome, yeah, we're welcome to everyone else from Wisconsin on the call tonight, too. Cool. Oh. Okay. Oh. So okay. Something. Well, thanks everyone for introducing yourselves. I wanna share my screen with you and then Chris Ford is going to help me too. We're going to kind of volley this back and forth and co-host, but I wanna share my screen with you and show you a couple of slides <clears throat> because I did go ahead and jot down the questions that you had sent in and I definitely want to touch on those questions as well as answer your other questions. And can everybody see that? Um, mm -hmm. I just, mm -hmm. if you want to grab, you know, something to write with and uh, we'll have some information on here or if you don't already have, you're already on your laptop, but let's go ahead and jump right into this. And I would love for all the students to participate. But one of the questions that came in was how much should I budget for a semester of community college to live at home? And that's pretty uh, data driven and that, um, has an answer to it. And if you actually go to our Lincoln Trail College page, uh, you can find all of that on there. There is a, a price comparison chart and you can see what it would cost to attend one of our community colleges versus going straight to a four-year university. And so after we're done, I will share this with you via email so that you have the link. These are all live links. You can click on the images and see that. But I, would wa I was wondering if any of you who did choose to come to a two-year school as opposed to going straight to a four-year school, if you just wanted to talk for maybe a minute about that and talk about maybe the money that you saved and put this into more practical context. Okay, I can start. Um, so I actually came to LPC my first two years of college, and I graduated with my associates with no debt. And then I transferred to Eastern, and so I got my bachelor's with only 15000 in student debt. And when I compare that to my friends, that number is just extremely smaller and less terrifying than what they have. So if I could do it again, I would go to LTC again. Awesome. And anybody else? Um, so I was thinking about going to Dayton University. Um, 
And that was going to be roughly around like forty or forty-five thousand dollars a year um, for just tuition, just general on-campus tuition. And I think Lincoln Trail, I came and spent like less than like eight, less than like it was. I can't tell you exactly, but it was between like it was significantly cheaper than that. It really is a huge saving. Um, and Connor, can I ask you, did you have scholarships? Were you able to apply for different scholarships that the college offers? And you said you had your whole first two years pretty much paid for. Did you have some? Yes. I, uh, I played softball my first two years of college at Lincoln Crow. Okay. And the first year, I the first semester I wasn't offered the full, like the tuition waiver, so I got a foundation scholarship actually. And it helped a lot. Uh, is there anybody else on this call who has a foundation scholarship and would you maybe want to share with our students what that means? Anybody else? Uh, I, I don't know if it was a foundation scholarship, but I filled out like some paperwork and I had to write a paper and I, I, I mean, I got this, I got the scholarship, but I think it was too late to turn it in because of this whole coronavirus thing. It was stuck at school in my mailbox at school. And then when I came to move out, I had to grab it. And it was like a couple weeks past when I had to turn it in. Okay. Uh, we, the found, Lincoln Trail College had, and like most colleges, but Lincoln Trail has a very generous foundation. And they work hard every year to, um, you know, secure scholarships and with, an application, I think like Connor mentioned, filling out that paperwork and um, submitting that each year will probably give you a pretty good chance at earning some extra money to help offset the cost of going to school. And so it really is a significant savings by going the community, co uh, community college route. And I thought that was a really good question. I know sometimes it's a hard decision, especially if your friends are all going straight to a four-year school but Connor graduated from Eastern $15,000 total, and most students are accruing that every year times four years. And so it really is a, a big savings. Um, and this okay. kind of hits on the Yeah. Dovetail off of that, you know, something that, that we did, uh, and this has been a few years ago, but, you know, we thought, okay, it would be kind of fun to take a look at, you know, what you could do with your savings. So we, we put together this, fun poster a few years ago and kind of compared, you know, our tuition with, you know, that of a lot of the other colleges where, where people went and came up with all kinds of crazy ways that you could spend that, that money on other things. And, you know, the, the biggest difference that we had uh, was enough to pay for a trip to climb Mount Everest. I mean, just to put that in perspective and, and you know, we had a few others where, you know, you could take multiple trips to Hawaii or, uh, you know, my favorite was, you know, you could buy like 2000 tacos with the, the savings that, that you had, you know, just fun stuff like that. And, uh, you know, obviously that's, you know, fun, cutesy stuff, but that of course, I mean, that's real money. And, you know, you, you hear so much now about college debt that people are getting into. And that's the great thing about Lincoln Trail College is, uh, you know, you're not going to be accumulating all of this crazy debt when you come there. So that's going to help you when you're, you're ready to take that next step in your life after college. Definitely. Right. And if you want to really drill down, um, there is a slide here. And, and again, most colleges will have this, but you can actually Google this and find it right on our website. And you can see dollar to the dollar how much it would cost per credit to take classes at Lincoln Trail. And then if you compare that again to, you know, $92 a credit plus fees is a lot different. The most schools are anywhere from 300 to 600 or $700 a credit. So it's a significant savings. Um, and let's go to the next I question. Have a, I have something to add, Tana. We're, um, when it talks about how should I budget for a semester of community college, if I live at home, um, it looks as if, so far, we've only talked about tuition and fees and the, and the savings there, um, but you also need to budget in uh, the cost of textbooks, which mm -hmm. isn't included in that tuition and fees. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we might ask the students, 
who were on our panel how much they spent on books if they were not on scholarship. Um, but depending upon your major, um, who, you know, you could look at spending anywhere from $300 to $500 a semester on textbooks if you are not on a book scholarship. So that's something that you would need to, to budget in as well. Um, is the cost of textbooks, and that seems to be one of the most costly things for our students when they come, is, is their ability to afford buying the textbooks. And any of the students who are on the call right now who currently are in college, do you have anything to share, or maybe your strategies for budgeting or planning ahead for these extra costs that maybe aren't covered in your tuition? Um, yeah. Uh, what I did is I would divide my money into like different accounts. So like within my bank, I created like three savings accounts and within my money, I would divide up based on my plan. So like how much I knew I was going to need for my housing fees and then meeting that I would spend maybe three to 500 a week in like extremities and food and stuff like that. And I would put them all into different accounts so that I was never taking out like an unestimated amount of money and not like really keeping track of how much I had for each different uh, like category of living. Awesome. Awesome. Did you know that winter coming in or did you kind of figure that out or what, you know, again, the title of this session is what I wish I'd known before going to college. And so sometimes those are things we learn after maybe doing it the wrong way or figuring out the hard way. Is that something you kind of had a good handle on before coming to college? Um, I had a good like, estimate as far as like actual living goes, as far as like food and bills and stuff like that, it was pretty clean cut, but one of the things that I didn't really realize and that I kind of had to focus on was like the entertainment and hanging out with my friends, because like when I was in high school, it was more of a, when I wanted to go out to, my, uh, to a movie with my friends, it was my mom giving me the $20 or whatever. Um, and I never really had to factor that kind of stuff in. So it was just kind of like a realization of how much the extra stuff that isn't really essential to living, but stuff that you're gonna wanna do for like different like field trip opportunities or like going to the movies or going out to all these different things that you're gonna wanna do socially. Excellent. That's awesome. Um, anybody Remember else? Remember to add in the cost of eating. That was an important one. So actually you have a very smart plan there, Winter. That's a good idea to share. Yeah, do you like have a secret MBA or something? <laughs> Winter's a very independent, uh, wise young woman, I would say. She's, she's well-rounded and versed in <laughs> living and being independent. <laughs> yes. Um, as we move into the next question, I know we have several student athletes on the panel and so even though this is a, a question pertaining specifically to student athletes and we have people on the call who aren't an athlete but i think so many of the tips that i've heard uh, apply and regardless are transferable so um if you're a student athlete or even if you're not what support services you know does Lincoln trail offer um and kind of talk about that a little bit if you wouldn't mind i think uh, Lincoln Trail has a really good learning skills center, which is kind of like, um, I wouldn't really know how to explain it other than like a person, like if you need any kind of help whatsoever, you can go there. You can go there for printing, computers. Um, I think that's a real, that's probably the biggest support system that I've, that I had uh, in my first year at school. Exactly. And don't students student athletes and anyway, don't you have to go a certain time or a certain day or is that kind of built into the team expectations that you'll spend time in the learning skills center yeah so as as freshmen what is it johnny you have to have an hour and a half in there at each week uh yeah for like newcomers or freshmen you'd have like an hour and a half a week and then you also had to go to like a 30 minute seminar um I like got Wednesday and like once you get your time then you like don't have to go back in there the rest of the week but usually like most of the team would go in there between classes and stuff just to get their homework done so they don't have to worry about it on the weekend or just in case we have like an away game or if they have to go like down south or anything like people just get their homework done right away in there 
And if you receive a, if you receive over a three five, three point five GPA um, in your first semester, then you won't have to go to, you won't have to go to the Learning Skills Center and serve that time. Awesome. So, Tana, let me ask a question that that kind of is related to that, uh, and just sort of for all of our our athletes, because you know when you guys introduce yourselves. Uh, we're all very, very busy people. And talk a little bit about, you know, what, what you learned about time management in terms of balancing academics and athletics and social time and all of that uh, during your, your first year of college. Well, it's a, it's a lot of planning. Like for baseball, our practices would be pretty long. So if, and we get back if you, or, you know, I, I meal prepped a lot and it's just like you got to prepare yourself you got to have a plan and you've got to like keep stick to that plan and kind of manage your time very very well because i mean you only have so many certain hours in the day that you can use up yeah i, I agree with blake like you have to make sure that you have like a routine like i'd make sure like i have like a 9 a.m or an 8 a.m class and then i wouldn't have a like a class till 10. So in between then, I'll be like eating breakfast and then doing homework that's that I have to like do at like the end of the week, and I'll just stay on top of everything because I learned the hard way about procrastinating because then you're just gonna dig yourself into a hole that's gonna be hard to get out of. So it's like the best thing is not to procrastinate and just make sure you're on top of all your school stuff. And if like you're having complications with like an assignment, say like your internet goes out or like it won't you submit it, all you have to do is just talk to your advisors and they're usually really laid back about that stuff where they're like really understanding where they'll give you like another day or they'll help you like submit it and say i know for me when i transferred to eastern i actually kind of struggled with time management from spending so much time in the learning skills because that's where i kind of got all my schoolwork done but then when i transferred like i didn't have that routine so I had to think back to my time at LTC and think about what helped me be better prepared with my studies. So because of the learning skills, like it helped me do better at EIU because I knew I needed to sit back times every day to work on my homework. Yeah, I really focused on blocking my days up. So like on certain days of the week, cause I took like 30 something credit hours a semester, had three jobs and was also on the soccer team. So I didn't have much free time. Um, so I would focus on like blocking up my days and trying to multitask as much as possible. So like I would eat on like my walks to different meetings that I had, or I would do like, as far as my sleep schedule went, I would work until like 10 o'clock at night. And then I would um, do all of my homework from like 10 till 12 and then I would um, sleep for like three or four hours and then I'd get up at like 5 a.m. for like soccer workouts and then I'd have uh, one of my jobs again from like seven till eight and it was um, like the good thing about most of my classes is that there's mixes of like um, the times that they're in and like what um, way you learn so like a lot of them were online but some of them were like maybe uh, four hours I'd have in class so breaking up that time and um, blocking it up based on I have these classes and now I have this space. So I really need to use this to like either take a nap or to go to lunch um, and like get something quick so I can eat while I'm in this meeting. Or um, one of my jobs as the like study skills center manager allows me to do my homework and work on stuff of that sort um, while I'm there, while I'm uh, working. So taking advantage of those different opportunities to kind of just get in whatever I can uh, was like my main focus. And you know, one thing I want to add, and this is something we talk about in the Pathways class that I teach, what you're all describing, I can tell is like a well-oiled machine. Now you've got it figured out. You've got your routine. You know how to take advantage of your one hour time blocks in between classes. Winter, you talk about eating on the run, blocking your study time. When you come out of high school, which a couple of our students are right now, you basically go from Monday through Friday being in school from eight to three every day, scripted, you know, when your classes are, the bell rings, you go to the next class, to a schedule that's kind of wide open and is up to you for how you're going to use that time. You know, you might have a Monday, Wednesday, Friday class at eight and 10 and one, Tuesday, Thursday, maybe one class, 
and you have all this time on your hands that you never had as a high school student. So what type of strategy or planner or system did you find to be kind of helpful as you made that big change from high school schedule to this whole new way of living and doing college? Um, one of the big things for me was that um, one of the things that um, LTC has is Canvas. And within that, it has all of the classes that you're in. And within that, um, it requires the teachers to put in like all of your assignments, their due dates, like a description of what's going to happen, like tests and stuff like that. And it automatically puts them on this calendar as far as like laying out the, like basically the whole year for you and what you're going to have to do and like what times your um, bigger projects are due and how, like what weeks have like multiple classes that have something due um, compared to like one week where you're pretty much free and like open as far as class assignments and stuff like that. And so I would really use that calendar a lot, like based on my day, I'd be like, okay, I have like these three assignments that I need to work on. And I would create alarms on a personal calendar, which I can like create um, like alarms and a description of like what's gonna happen. And so I would like cross those two calendars together um, in order to be like, this is my study time. I have 30 minutes to do this. Um, like these things are due. Um, that would lay out basically my whole month. Okay. Anybody else have a different system, strategy, or way that you can kind of keep yourself on a schedule? Planner, Google Calendars. A lot of students are using Canvas. And it, um, I would. A person. I would use like um, so at the beginning of the year uh, during orientation, they would give us like planner agendas. And so I would write out everything like I had going towards the week and then make sure every day I looked at those and put a due date. And I also worked in the bookstore, so I had plenty of time to like plan because the bookstore wasn't always super busy. Um, so I would just do that and I would try to get everything done ahead of time just in case a last minute assignment popped up. So you'd have plenty of time. Awesome. I have a couple of things to add, Tana, after the students are done talking. Uh, I would, I would use my, uh, I'd use my phone a lot to uh, schedule more stuff. Like I had all my classes and the times that I had like that they were at on my notes, and then I'd also have reminders for like uh, all my assignments that are due. Because uh, Monday was usually like my uh, short day, so every assignment that I got on Monday, I would like try to do it before practice, so I didn't have to worry about those being due on Friday. Because uh. So I would have time to do all my other assignments. Like if I had like a comp paper to write or something, that's going to take a little bit longer. So I would give myself more time to complete those assignments. Blake or Max, did you have anything to add before I go? Or? Yeah, so, um, so I think my biggest uh, the best thing for me to keep my schedule was just Canvas. The teachers, I thought, did a really good job at um, having everything posted and a syllabus so you could see when assignments were going to be due if you needed or just every, like even just through the week. Um, they would always just have assignments in their due date. So I think that was probably the best thing to keep me in, uh, to keep me in line. Okay, um, something that I would add um, is that the students really gave some great tips. Um, I think that one way to think of this, and Tana, kind of to go off of what you said about moving from that high school to college thinking, um, think of um, being in college as your job, okay? And so if you're on a scholarship or rather you're uh, receiving um, any kind of a grant or however, um, you are paying for college, think of this as you're getting paid to go to school every day. Okay? And so instead of looking at, you know, wow, I have an hour between classes here and I have an hour between classes there, think of that instead of an hour to sit on the couch and take a nap or go play a video game, 
think of that as an hour study hall, okay? Um, if your classes are from like eight to one every day, um, think of it as having an eight to three um, day and use that extra time um, for study blocks. You know, time in between classes to study or uh, to go down to the Learning Skills Center to work um, and make use of that time. And I think Max, um, I think Winter um, kind of said something about this as well, um, but um, Max brought up that you, you get that syllabus out at the beginning of the semester and there should be due dates on that. Instructors should have due dates on there and go ahead and fill in a planner. Get a planner. We sell them in the bookstore. You can get them at Walmart pretty cheap, but get a planner and fill that planner out at the beginning of the semester with every syllabus for each of your classes so that you know every week, whole semester, what you have to do. Okay, and nothing creeps up on you. These due dates don't creep up on you. Um, and it's a great way to kind of plan things out. And I'm not sure, it might have changed this year. Um, student athletes, do you guys still do study tables as a team? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so study tables is another way. I mean, this question was about student athletes and how, how do we stay on task when we have all these other responsibilities. Um, but every athletic team also has study tables at night where the team gets together. What do you guys do, like two or three hours? Something like that. And so that's um, a good opportunity to have some time after practice and, and after dinner or whatever to, sometimes I think they're in the afternoon, um, but to get together and um, work as a team to get your, your school work done for that week. Um, and then the last thing I would say um, is that uh, we do have a progress report system, and so any students that fall behind, um, we can submit progress reports saying the student is falling behind, that goes to their advisor. Um, but if you are a student athlete, that it's not just going to go to your advisor, your coach is also going to get a hold of that um, progress report. And um, that is one way that student athletes are able to stay on task, is because when the coaches get involved, um, typically see the student athletes making up any work that's missing or getting caught up okay pretty quickly um, and so that progress report system is in place to keep all of our students not just student athletes but all of our students on track if they fall behind but student athletes kind of have that little extra guidance coming from their coaches as well and not just the advisor mm -hmm. and to add on to that cindy if i could um you know with the progress reports we we have a uh, retention coordinator. Uh, her name is Jamie Carmen, and she's really there to also help make sure that, you know, if you have resources that are missing for some reason, um, you know, or, or you need that extra help, she's there to, you know, help point you in that, that right direction. Um, the retention coordinator can do a lot of different things uh, for us uh, in terms of you know, helping make sure that you do have everything that you need. And, you know, we, we've had our retention coordinator do things before, like help make sure people have food or, or babysitting, um, you know, help make sure they can get tutoring that they need or, you know, get a little extra boost as far as study skills or, or whatnot. So, uh, you know, that's a, another really good resource, especially if you're starting to have. Yeah, thank you. I'm going to tag team off of that, if you don't mind. Um, Chris mentioned that um, you can get tutoring. That's actually another thing that comes from the Learning Skills Center, is you can go in and get one-on-one -on -one tutoring with somebody that is more, is more knowledgeable in the field, and it can help you with every subject. You can have somebody go with you word for word with the paper or with math, just whatever you need. And the tutoring is free. Yes, Even better. Into the Learning Skills Center, for <laughs> definitely, for sure. Okay, let's go ahead and move into the next question because I think that this is a very individualized question. And so I think what you all would have to share would be helpful. And um, it's usually a pretty popular, common question because I've heard a lot of high school students say they didn't really have to study a whole lot in high school, but now they've transitioned to college and they're kind of expected to know how to study. And what does that look like? How do you even know the best way? And so this question was posed on the registration form. How do you find the best studying method for you? So I would love to just open this up and just share those of you um, who have something to, you know, 
uh, advise our new students with? Um, at the beginning of the year, when all the freshmen were, when we had to go to Miss Gowers, Miss Rena Gowers' class, um, she spent actually like a couple weeks talking to us if we weren't unsure, or we if we weren't sure what kind of uh, studier we were, or what kind of student she called it we were. Mm -hmm. um, so you can take like tests and stuff. She gives you things you can um, do like surveys and find out what they suggest the best study method is for you. But if you're worried about it, I wouldn't be because um, when you do get on campus, you're definitely gonna get a better understanding of yourself and how you study. It's really good advice, Max, yes. Yeah, college is a lot different. And at Lincoln Trail, they really set you up for success. Like there's tons of ways that they help you to try to find your study habits through RENA and then through Pathways of Success which are both required for student athletes and I think for students too, for regular students too. It just, it really helps because they, sh like Max said, they help you figure out what study or what type of study person you are. Anybody else? Um, yeah, when uh, I was having trouble with math, I always went to the uh, Learning Skills Center to, to the tutor and she really helped me a lot in there. Like she explained it differently and like, yeah, went over problems with me. And I went there probably three times a week when I could fit it in between like class and practice and everything. And it really helped like my test scores went up and everything. It was just a, like, she was just a really big help. And I also like uh, studying, like I can't study by myself because there's too many distractions. So I like studying with like a couple people that are all in the same class and they're all having the same like problems that I am. So like me and a couple of the uh, baseball players would all, always study together for uh, for math and everything like that. I want to share a slide with you. And again, in Pathways to Success, and I think uh, Max said this, this is just one of the tools I use for my students, but I would encourage you, even when we hang up the phone tonight, if you haven't used this one, there are many, but bark-learn.com and you would go to the questionnaire and you would take the, the questionnaire and then it's going to give you a number for V, A, R, and K. And those stand for different uh, types of learning preferences that we all have. Some people are visual, some people are auditory, you know, they learn by listening. Some people can read two chapters and go take a test and do really well on it. Others can read two chapters and not even remember what they just read. Kinesthetic is a fancy word for hands-on. People are hands-on learners. And then what's cool is on that same website, and I've, I've got it right here, the VARC strategy, click on that, the different links, it will give you study tips. It will tell you, you know, if you're a visual learner, what might be best methods for studying. And so just like Max mentioned, these are really helpful tools. And I think sometimes students just struggle with thinking, oh, they just aren't smart or they can't really get it or they're not a math person when really it could just be a mismatch between versus what your own study preferences and learning preferences and learning styles are. So this is a fantastic tool. Max, do you remember any other assessments like this that you took specifically that maybe help you or do you just kind of remember Sorry. the advice? Could you, say, could you say that one more time? When you talked about going to the Learning Skills Center and taking some of these different assessments kind of to figure out how you study best, do you remember any of those specifically or do you just kind of remember getting the advice to go and search the stuff out? Um, you mean like specifically meaning like the website that it was on? Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, no, I don't. Just how to just a self-assessment type, type tools that you were you using? Yes. And anybody um, else, any other students, though? This is a very important topic, I think. Um, you know, things that you kind of want to figure out sooner than later. There's a program on Canvas when you go on there for Anatomy 1. and Roy made us take, there's kind of like a drop-down menu, and it'll make you take a test and ask you questions like, um, do you like using your hands? Are you better using your hands? And that was awesome. And Macy, you said that um, Anne Roy had you guys do that as, as part of the class at the beginning of the class? She just told us like to individually do it. She never really 
picked up on it, but that helped me a lot, especially studying because they knew I would test. I wouldn't do that. I agree. Those things are really helpful. Anybody else with studying or how you kind of figured out the best way for you? Um, but one of the things that I think is kind of a misunderstanding between like the idea of college versus high school is the idea of lecture learning and like textbook learning. I think that one of the reasons why so many high school kids are worried about this is because they think that it's going to be a lot of like studying a textbook and having to like have like 15 chapters that you're going to need to know by next week or something like that when especially in like in trail college um, or like during the first week of school in my classes the teacher um more often than not would ask us how we liked to learn how they would how we would prefer the class to be conducted whether or not we wanted to have presentations or um if we wanted it to be more conversational or if we wanted to work in groups and like partners more than individually and stuff like that and how just the environment of learning changes a lot in college and how they'll cater to your style of learning more than you having to just master like regurgitation and memorization. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Cindy, well, Tana, if the students are done, I, I'd like to add a couple of things uh, as well. Yeah, go ahead. And Cindy, I'd like for Cindy to add kind of her special collaborative uh, classroom that she has. I think that's really awesome. Yeah, Chris, go ahead. All right. So, you know, one of the things that, that, you know, I found when I went to college, even though that seems like it was a hundred years ago now, um, you know, don't be afraid to ask questions. Um, you know, especially if you're, you're not understanding something, uh, don't be afraid to ask for help. Um, you know, our instructors are really, really good about working with students. And uh, now I, I didn't go to Lincoln Trail College, but, you know, I still had a lot of uh, luck working with my professors when I was in college, you know, just get help. And, you know, the, the other thing too that, uh, you know, I found very important is, you know, kind of going back to what, what our students were saying earlier too, with, with tests especially, is don't procrastinate. Um, you know, that, that syllabus, you're going to know when your, your major tests and quizzes are. And it's important to start planning ahead for that. I, I knew people that uh, had a lot of all-nighters uh, studying when they were in college, and uh, in a lot of cases, I knew what their grades were like, and, and they were not necessarily the, the best grades in the world. Um, I, in, in my four years of college, I think I did one all-nighter, and I was miserable after that. And um, you know, that's something that if you plan ahead and you're working and building up your knowledge, uh, you're, you're going to be a lot better off. Mm -hmm. I saw a lot of people smiling when you were talking about pulling all-nighters because I think there are a lot of nods and smiles. And when you talked about being miserable the next day. <laughs> <laughs> um, anything else with that one before we move on to the next question? I know Cindy's got some great insights for the, the last question here. No, I'm good. So, Cindy, if you want to take off. Okay, well, um, what I wanted to add a faculty perspective to the question you just addressed, um, the best studying method. Um, I would definitely say that uh, Tana kind of brushed on something there with the BARC um, strategy. When I taught Pathways, I used that uh, same test there. And um, I think that the best thing that I can say is to communicate with your instructor. Mm -hmm. okay? um, let us know, like, what works for you. It, it's not just about what is the best studying method for you, but it's also what is the best learning style for you. Um, some students can't listen to lecture. Um, some students are a uh, visual learner. Some students are hands-on learners. Um, you know, some say, I just need to do it myself. And I mean, so you need to communicate with us, okay, about what is the best way to, for you to learn. If um, we're gonna lecture three days a week for an hour, um, each time, are you going to fall asleep and not learn anything? You know, um, 
you know, what works for you. Um, in my classroom, um, I think I've only had uh, Madison and Max um, in my classroom. Um, and we do uh, more collaborative learning. Um, this past uh, semester, I, I tried to just lecture like once a week and spend the other two days of the week or Tuesday, Thursday class, just one day of the week um, with the students working in groups and um, trying to work on the homework assignments and um, the quizzes as a group. Um, and then of course, when it came to taking the assignments, I'm sorry, taking the exams, uh, those would be done on your own. Um, but the idea of working together in groups um, really helps students to, in my opinion, I'd like to see the, hear the um, student perspective on that, but working in groups allows the students who are maybe a little bit afraid to raise their hand and ask a question in class, mm -hmm. um, they're a little less afraid to ask another student um, in, the, in those groups during class, okay? It, it's not, it's a lot easier to ask a, a group of students, there's three or four of you, um, as opposed to um, asking in front of a group of 20 to 30 students. Um, so I think it, it allows the students, the idea here is it allows the students to learn some soft skills that you need for the, um, the job market and your career field. Working with other people is something you're gonna do the rest of your life, and this is letting you do that. Um, you're learning how to solve things together as a group, how to think out loud, um, but also, um, some students are just more comfortable working in a smaller group as opposed to a large class. And um, the feedback we got when we started this two years ago uh, was that a lot of students just don't want to listen to their teacher talk 50 minutes a day, three days a week. Um, they aren't learning anything. They're tuned out. I'm not listening. I'm focused on something else. Um, but when I can just come into class and work, I'm going to learn more. So, um, but the best thing you can do is communicate with your instructor on that. So Madison, you were a dual credit student this past semester, what did, and then we only got to do it for half a semester. Um, Max, you have been, um, you were in world history, right? Only half a semester also. So, but what did you guys think of working in groups as opposed to doing it on your own and listening to a lecture and doing it outside of class? I think uh, when we were in groups, I definitely heard more from the kind of quieter kids in the class than I did when we were in, when like uh, we were all kind of just one group, one big group. So I think- Can it affect the learning process for you as a student? For me, I think it, I think it helped. Um, I definitely do better when I'm uh, hands-on instead of just listening to a lecture. Mm -hmm. Connor, is that your dog? That was not mine. <laughs> <laughs> I, picked up a, I picked up a tennis ball thinking it was a regular tennis ball, but it was my dog's little squeaky toy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> my dog did just bounce up, though. <laughs> <laughs> um, but going on, Tana, to the next question, uh, what are some tips for passing anatomy and physiology? which I think Macy said that she took anatomy, so she might be able to um, add to this. Um, but uh, I talked to uh, my niece and her husband who actually met in anatomy class five years ago and now are married, um, but they met in Anne Roy's anatomy class and they both took anatomy one and two um, and uh, are both nurses um, in, in the medical field. One is a nurse and one is um, in the pharmacy. Um, but what they said to pass anatomy one and two, number one, you have a textbook, read it. That's the most, the, he's an, um, her husband is an ER nurse. He said, read the textbook. It is huge. It is a very large textbook, but if you want to pass the Roy's class, read the book. I would say that's a good practice for any class that you take at LTC, not just anatomy. Um, note cards. He said note cards are important um, to help you learn the muscles, the nerves, the bones, and everything else. Write, uh, write things on note cards, um, writing it down on those note cards each week, and then practicing them before the exam um, is going to help you retain that better. Um, don't miss a lab was another thing. Uh, the labs are a huge part of your grade, and they're only once a week, so missing one lab is a huge dent in your grade. And then the last piece of advice that they gave 
was attendance. Mm -hmm. um, try not to miss any anatomy classes. Um, my niece told me, um, she said, I got a C in Anne Roy's anatomy class. Her husband got an A, she got a C, but she said, I got a C in that class. I attended every single day and never missed class. My grade should not have been a C, but I got a C because I was there 100% of the time. So she said, factor, attendance factors in, you, if you're on the edge, and I say that for any class, Mr. Thorson might be able to weigh in on this. If you're, if you're there every single day and you're right on the edge, you're gonna get that extra, you're gonna get that bump up. Um, if you only show up half the time or if you show up one day and we as instructors can't remember your name or that you were even in our class when you show up that one day, um, when you're on that border, you're gonna get that lower grade. So attendance is, is very important. Macy, did you have anything to add to that? I know you took the class, like Cindy said. Um, so like in our anatomy book, when you open it, there will be a code mm -hmm. and you go to the website and type in that code. And I use that a lot because it gave it reviewed over some of the chapters and um, you could take quizzes and tests and kind of see how much you knew. And that kind of told you how much you need to study more on. I also did a lot of flashcards and anatomy was my main one to where I would go through that whenever I had time. Um, that was a lot of my studying time went to anatomy just because um, I was worried, but I ended up doing okay. Awesome. And I think like Cindy talked about with the last question, communicating with your teachers. I know that class can be pretty intimidating for a lot of students and once they maybe hit a bump or don't do so well on a quiz or fail a lab uh, exam, then, you know, go right to the teacher and talk to the teacher. This is true for all of your classes. Start an open dialogue with all of your teachers. They are there to help you. And especially with a class like this. And so I just think advocating for yourself, you know, making sure the teacher knows who you are, asking questions, meeting with the teacher during their office hours and getting that extra help to make sure you stay on track is just communication is always good advice. And if anyone else wants to weigh in on this one, I would welcome you to, but we have about um, eight more minutes and I would love to just popcorn around and leave, leave this open. And for those of you who were so nice to join us tonight and give us an hour of your time to be on the panel, what is one piece of advice, just a brief or simple tip, one thing that you wish you would have known that we maybe haven't talked about tonight before coming into college that maybe would have made your transition just a little bit easier, a little bit smoother? Mine would be make sure that you show up early before your class so you can find a parking spot <laughs> because this year there was a like a big teacher meeting or somewhat and I was running late and I parked at the very, very, very back park of the parking lot and I was running to get to the Williams Hall building and I was, it was really bad. So make sure you have plenty of time. Great advice. I think that my biggest thing would be um, college is what you make it. Like it's not like like high school where you're gonna have these clubs that you can join and you're gonna be like like kind of smashed into these groups and into these different experiences and stuff like that you're only gonna be involved in the experiences and in the programs and the clubs and stuff like that, that you choose to go into or that you participate in, that you show up for and stuff like that. Like no one's gonna force you to do anything. And that means that, yeah, you're not gonna have to do the stuff that you didn't like, but it also means that you're gonna have to seek out and find opportunities for the things that you do want and the things that interest you um, just as much. Excellent advice, awesome, yes. Uh, I would say that time management is a really big thing, even for non-athletes, it's a really big thing. Also, um, you're going to have to be way more responsible and independent because you're not going to have your mom or dad there anymore telling you, hey, you need to do this, you need to do that every single day. So you're going to have to find a system that works for you and be really responsible with your money. Don't be going blowing it on the first week just because you don't have your parents around telling you no. So that's about it. Very good tip, Johnny. I think, <laughs> that was a good one, Johnny. I think that's a good thing, What a uh, really good thing what Winter said. Um, 
but also laundry. Make sure you set aside a day or two, depending on how fast your folding skills are. <laughs> um, <laughs> and also, I mean, yeah, but going off of, again, what Winter said, um, I mean, you don't have to be there anymore. It's college. It's your choice. So um, I think you should just dig your head into each one of your classes and kind of figure out what kind of stuff you like so that you don't have to work in the future so that you can like your job. Great, Max, that's awesome. A couple of things that I would add, um, one of my students that um, couldn't join us tonight, it looks like she didn't end up joining us, but um, she was in PTK, she was a local student from Robinson. She was in PTK and Student Senate. Um, and some of the best friends that she made on campus uh, were people that came here from out of state and they actually ended up rooming together when they moved on to a four-year university. Um, and she said, get involved. Okay? College is what you make out of it. And I would say that from when I was in college too. Um, college is what you make out of it. If you just come to class and go home, then college at LTC is not going to be a lot of fun, but if you get involved um, and uh, you become part of LTC um, and part of the culture and uh, go, go, even if you're a local student, um, go to the basketball games, go to a baseball game, go to a soccer game, volleyball, whatever it is. Um, when we hold events on campus, um, student athletes and non-athletes this is your chance to venture out into places that you were maybe not comfortable with. Try the theater. We had a baseball player, it's probably been about 10 years ago now, um, that um, he was a star pitcher, went on to pitch at Ball State, but now he's an actor because he got involved in theater um, here at LTC. And he's actually an actor and has had um, some, um, he's had some roles on some nighttime uh, popular uh, TV series. Um, you know, just minor roles, but he's getting started in that career. So get involved. You never know what college, where it's going to take you besides just that thing you're majoring in to become your career. You don't know the friends that you're going to make at college um, if you get involved. You know? um, the other thing that I would say, um, I was going to add something about laundry. So thank you, Max. If you don't know how to do your own laundry and you're going to live on campus, then ask your mother over the summer to teach you how to do laundry. Um, and the other thing I would say is if you're going to live on campus, learn how to grocery shop. Go with mom to the grocery store and learn how to buy groceries the proper way so that you can be efficient with your money, um, but also be eating nutritiously and not just getting some banquet meals every night because that seems like the easiest thing. So have mom show you how to buy groceries. Yeah. Off of what she was saying, um, I remember the baseball team, I remember the one stories, like if people are like low on money or like they, some people didn't know how to cook or anything, everybody would throw in like a little bit of money and we'd all go to the grocery store and like we'd all just cook a big meal for like everybody. That's fun. Blake or Connor, anything else, a tip that you wish you would have known before starting college? Um, <laughs> you can go first. Okay. Um. I would have saved, like what Winter said like earlier, I would have saved up a lot more before going into college because um, you, you go through it faster than you think. Because you're living on your own, you don't realize how much you depend on your parents while you're in high school, how much they really do pay for. It. And then you're like, you just jump into it with college and you pretty much pay for everything. And if you don't have it saved up, you have to get a job and it's, and you have to manage your time even more tightly. Exactly. Um, really the biggest thing that I needed to learn was to not be terrified of my professors like um, Cindy or Phil will tell you I probably didn't talk to them that much and that's probably one of my biggest regrets I was scared of them I don't know why they're just humans too so that's my biggest advice to remind you that your instructors they're human just like you so they will be there for you and they want you to come talk to them but yet Connor has known me since like the first grade. <laughs> it's, it's intimidating. It's that power thing. Chris, how about you? Uh, you know, I, I think winter really summed up a lot of what I would have said. It, and 
you know, a couple other people too, is college is what you're going to make of it. And, you know, this is really your, your opportunity to explore a, a little bit and, and find out, you know, new things about yourself, new interests and likes. Uh, you know, to be quite frank, uh, one of my extracurricular activities in college led me to a 15-year career. Uh, and it was something that at the time, I didn't think I was going to like that. And, you know, there I was 15 years uh, of doing a job that I absolutely loved. So, you know, be willing to get involved, do things, have fun, um, you know, make the most of your experience. Uh, you know, nobody, nobody is going to make you do these things. So, you know, you have to do these things yourself and get the most out of the opportunities. Exactly. Go out of your comfort zone a little bit. Try new things. And Madison and Austin, anything else that you might uh, be thinking before we hang up? It's We've hit our outer limit and I really have enjoyed the conversation and I think that we could keep going for a while, but for the sake of time, is there anything else that maybe we didn't touch on tonight that you'd like to ask? Madison, did we answer all of your questions? Yeah, pretty much. Okay, all right. Austin, anything that we uh, didn't talk about that you might have a question about? Can I ask a question? Um, this is Austin's dad, he's, he's not here right now. How, um, how close is the shopping to everything? How close <laughs> is the shopping? <laughs> yeah, we were shopping? Not, we were not, yeah, we were not able to, to visit the campus at all. Okay, um, I would say uh, from, uh, living on campus. Is he going to live on on in the dorms on campus or in town? Uh, he'll be living on campus, I think. With on the, campus, okay. Um, so you're only talking uh, about maybe about a mile to a mile, mile and a half to Walmart from campus. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So he, um, he can walk. <laughs> no, I wouldn't suggest walking because you're talking about walking on a highway. I was, I was but um, a lot of the students, a lot of the students, and I think the students that we have on here can tell you because they're all from out of um, out of town. Can tell you a lot of times they just they share rides, so they group together to go grocery shopping, as Johnny said. Um, yeah, we carpool a lot. Yeah, there's a lot of carpooling involved to go grocery shopping. So. Okay. Thanks. That's a great You're question. Welcome. Oh, you know, actually, I do have another question now. Yeah. I've, been, I've been trying to get him to, he's going to be living in one of the, uh, one of the, I don't know statement if it's an app, but it's on statement rentals. A, a, a statement rentals. Are they, for, do I got to get microwaves, little mini refrigerators, any of that stuff? Um, Most of them get, come with it. Yeah, okay. in the dorms, you get a refrigerator, you get a stove. Um, you have to provide your own toaster, microwave, but what I suggest. Um, ours came. Ours. Ours came with a microwave and toaster. Oh really? Yeah. Mine's same. So it kind of just it. It's just if you get lucky, then you might get a couple appliances. But a mini fridge is nice to have. Yeah, you might want a mini fridge in your room for like your personal stuff that you don't like someone like stealing out of like the big fridge or anything like that. <laughs> Yeah, the, right. the dorms are set up apartment style, so it has a full-size kitchen with a full-size refrigerator, stove, and sink, and everything, so it has a full-size kitchen. But oh. I know, as Johnny said, a lot of the kids like to get, um, a lot of the students like to get a mini fridge for their bedroom, because their bed, your bedrooms do lock, right? Yes. You lock your bedrooms. Yeah. I would wait to get anything other than a mini fridge before you can before you get there because the way they work is that a lot of the past students that have lived there just leave furniture there which is why some of them will have a toaster and a microwave some of them will even have like coffee tables and couches and stuff like that that'll be left there from previous years and the people who are in charge of the rentals will just leave it there for the next people to come in and see if they want it so other than like a mini fridge which i've never seen left there before um, I would wait to buy any furniture or like extra little things like that until you get there and you see what's already there. Yeah, that was my debate. I didn't know if I should pack up a car or like if the Walmart is close and you can get most of that stuff. There's a Walmart in town that all of us on moving day are just going in and out of all the time. Did okay. you guys all know who your roommates were before you moved in? 
Yes. And I would suggest talking, when you find out who your roommates are going to be, there's six of you in an apartment, right? I yeah. would, I would uh, communicate prior to going with roommates because sometimes uh, that way you don't duplicate things. You can kind of plan out who's going to provide what for the center part of the apartment. Yeah, that's yeah. what me and Blake did. Me and Blake were roommates and we were talking a couple, like a month before we moved in maybe, like, to, like who should bring what and stuff like that. Yeah, the soccer team, um, for our coach just made group chats for all of us. So he put us in different groups um, on our Facebook page of like um, after he assigned our roommates to make the talk and like figure all that out just to make an easier form of communication for us. Yeah, I guess my son plays soccer too, so I'm waiting for, he's waiting to find out who roommates are going to be. Mm -hmm. We're so excited to have Austin on campus as part of our very first men's soccer team. Yay! <laughs> he's excited. He is excited. Pop it up, Johnny. Yay! Very, very excited. And if he has any other questions, just ask. Or even, um, I know I sent the email out with the, con with the information for tonight. You can email me or contact the coach. Madison. Our winter is actually a good resource too because she was part of our first women's team last year, yay, which was super exciting. So we're just- winter, from Wisconsin? Yes, I am. What, where are you from? Um, I'm from Watertown. It's like over by Oconomowoc or- oh, uh, I don't know where that is. I know where that is. <laughs> See, that's so fun. Well, I appreciate everyone being on here tonight. This was, again, our very first time doing a virtual panel, and we're going to do this every other week. And so we'll have a different topic, and Chris will share out like he does on social media so well. And so make sure that you are plugged in to our social media accounts. And Chris, I'm going to let you cap off, button up our first virtual panel here. And is there anything else that you'd like to say or something maybe even to share about how on social media. So, uh, you know, we've started a couple of new things on, on social media that, that are really kind of fun that are also uh, very much in the, the vein of what we're doing. So we're doing something now called Two Minute Tuesdays, uh, which is going to feature uh, students talking about some of the same kinds of things that, that we talked about tonight. So we had really our, our first one uh, today actually, uh, from Alyssa Adams, who uh, was in Phi Theta Kappa, was in Statesman Singers, and she talks about her experiences doing that and also gives some really good advice for, uh, you know, somebody that's just starting college. And then we also started something called Faculty Fridays last week. So each Friday, we're going to have the chance to let you get to know our different instructors. So uh, Cindy Boyce was our our first person to do a faculty Friday. Phil is gonna be doing one uh, this week. And uh, I love the face, Phil. And, uh, you know, great opportunities there. Of course, we'll have this out there. And, uh, you know, we've been putting a lot of stuff out there, you know, welcoming our new students to Lincoln Trail College. So definitely, uh, you know, like us on our different social media platforms and uh, share and all that good stuff. Yes. So again, thank you to everyone on the call tonight, and we will look forward to hopefully seeing you all again in two weeks. And until then, if you have any questions, just reach out to any of us and let us know, and have a great rest of the evening tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.